Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to present you an opening trap that you can play as white in the Queen's Gambit. The trap is known as the Rubenstein trap, named after Akiba Rubenstein, a Polish Grandmaster who is considered to have been one of the strongest players never to have become world chess champion. In his youth he beat for example players like Capablanca and Schlechter and yeah, he was even scheduled for a world chess championship match against Emanuel Lasker in 1914. But unfortunately, because of the outbreak of World War I, the match had to be cancelled. Well, but let's go back to the trap. When I heard that the trap is named Rubenstein Trap, I thought, okay, Rubenstein was a pretty strong player. He probably would have beaten many, many players in this variation, and so he got credit for his good games, right? But to be absolutely honest, the completely opposite is the case. Rubenstein lost two games because of the trap. Can you imagine a player that is fighting for the world championship title losing two games to a simple trap like this? Well, I was confused, but yeah. On the other hand, think about it. If a strong player like Rubenstein could fall for the trap twice, then your opponents should be able to fall for it at least once. Or what do you think? Well, you can see the critical position already on the board. It's white to move and win right at the spot. But take your time. Before we just jump right into the tactic, I of course want to show you how to reach the position and what black should do to avoid to get trapped. So without further ado, it's time to checkmate. <laughs> So the game that we are following is a game between Alexander Alekhine and Akiba Rubenstein, two of the best chess players who ever lived on this planet. The game started with the moves d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6, c4 and after e6 we reached the queen's game and declined. Here white decided to play bishop g5, pinning the knight on f6 and putting some pressure on the black's pawn on d5. Now we will see some normal developing moves by both sides. Knight b to d7, e3, bishop e7, knight c3, castling, and rook c1. The reason behind rook c1 is that white argues, well, you know, at a certain point I will take the pawn on d5, and then it's probably good to have a rook on a semi open c file. Black played the move rook to e8, and he says, well, you can take the pawn on d5, because if I will take it back, then my rook will get the semi open e file. So both players are just playing good moves up to this point and here white continues developing by playing queen to c2. a6, white grabbed the pawn on d5, um, black recaptured, bishop d3, c6, castling and this is probably the first critical position. Here black decided to play knight to e4 and I believe that this could probably be the first slight mistake. I checked my database and it seems that players nowadays prefer to move knight to f8. For example, there's a grandmaster named Balashov who had many games in this position. And I just want to show you an example game by him um, that went on with the moves rook to e1. And now black is ready to jump in with the knight to e4. And after some exchanges, white um, put his knight back to d2 and black protected the pawn on f5. Here white decided to attack the center right away with f3 and black took the pawn. Black developed his uh, light square bishop with the idea of probably bringing it to the d5 square and at the same time protecting black's king from any attacks of the white queen. So game continued with e4, grabbing the center, black took on e4, the knight took on e4, now black installs a nice bishop on d5, and white does the same and installed a nice outpost on c5. And in this position both players agreed to a draw, and if you think about the position then I would say that this is probably a fair result, because I think the position is roughly equal. So let's go back to the main game. 
in the main game, Black played the move Knight e4. And as already mentioned, I think that this is probably a slight mistake. And the reason is that after Bishop f4, Black's best move is probably just to jump back with the Knight to f6. Why is it? Well, right in the moment, there are three pieces attacking the knight on e4, and well, how do we protect it? If you play a move like knight d to f6, well, then white just simply grabs the knight, and after some exchanges, um, black can try to attack the queen and the bishop at the same time with a move like bishop to d6. But after queen d3 and the bishop trade on f4, well, we reach a position where I think that white is slightly better. I have to admit that it's not a big advantage. I mean, okay, just to be clear, white is right now up a pawn, but it's an isolated pawn on a d file, so black can easily attack it by probably putting a queen on d5 and starting bringing the rooks on the d file, you know. So it's probably not that easy for white to defend the pawn and if you look at the pawn structure, then white also got a double pawn. But on the other hand, white is up a pawn. And I think this should be enough for a small advantage for white. So, yeah, let's go back to the game. In the game, Rubenstein now played a big blunder. He played a move f5. And I would advise you to pause the video and try to think about the position and why this is a blunder. Try to find a move for white that wins white on a spot. I'll give you three seconds to pause the video. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, not a problem. I will give you a little hint. If you look at the black queen, then she's actually pretty much surrounded by her own pieces and she really doesn't have many squares to go to. So an attack on a queen would probably mean that you win the queen. So. With this hint in mind, I'll give you another three seconds to pause the video if you need to and try to figure out what's White's best move. I'll give you three seconds. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. The right move is Knight takes d5 x clan. And yeah, what can Black do? Black cannot take the Knight because then the simple move and the beautiful move, of course, Bishop to c7 just simply wins the Queen. So. In the game, Black decided to play bishop e6. This is actually the strongest move. And after the exchange of bishops and the move knight to f4, we easily can stop our analyze here because white is just simply better. He's up a pawn and Black's king looks already a little bit weak because of the push of f5. The long diagonal a2 to b8 is pretty weak. On the same time, Black still has to face some difficulties developing his last pieces. And yeah, White went on to win the game. Well, I told you earlier that the trap has snared many players over the years, and so I thought, well, why not including a second game just to show you uh, another variation of the game. And I just want to jump back to this position. In this position, I told you that knight f8 is probably the best move. And we saw the move um, knight e4 by Rubenstein, who's probably not pretty good. But there are other moves. For example, let's say black plays the move h6. And now white just simply returns his bishop. And now just imagine, well, that black wants to get rid of the bishop on f4. Then he probably will play knight to h5. And believe it or not, but the trap works in this position as well. Because after knight takes d5, black cannot take the knight because then he would lose his queen again. So he has to take the bishop and after knight takes f4, well, we are the pawn again with a clearly better position. So all crumbs on the white side, right? So just keep in mind that the trap will work pretty much all the time when Black's queen is surrounded by too many pieces. You have at least a rook on the c file, you have a bishop on f4 and you have a knight on c3. And, and this is the most important part of the trap, this knight jumps away. So it doesn't matter if the knight jumps to h7, to h5, wherever it goes. 
It just doesn't matter. Whenever the knight moves, then you can just simply take off the pawn. So I hope you liked today's video and you learned something. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and let me know in the comments what video you would like to see next. So see you again when it's time to checkmate.